What's up guys, Levi here with Latino Fluency where I teach you Latino Spanish and also Brazilian Portuguese. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to optimize your desktop, your computer for Spanish language learning. So if you're trying to become fluent in Spanish, this is a must watch video. I promise it will make all the difference uh, in your mindset and your daily Spanish learning routine. Um, if you're taking a Spanish course with a, a high school, a university, wherever, you can add this to that to supplement your studies. I swear that it will make a massive difference and you'll be writing me in the comments uh, here in a few weeks telling me how much you appreciate it because it's just such great advice and uh, I'm happy to share it though. <laughs> All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you, this is my desktop. So this is what I have set up and I have multiple desktops for other other things that I'm doing, but this is my like little workflow here for learning Spanish, or I use this for really learning Brazilian Portuguese nowadays, but you can use it for Spanish. And let me show you how I do it, how I recommend you do it. Okay, so the first tab you got here, we'll move from left to right. First tab is tomato timer. This is a Pomodoro timer. The Pomodoro technique is when you study for 25 minutes, Without having any distractions, you put your phone in airport mode or airplane mode, um, you close everything else out, and you study or you work for 25 minutes. When you're done, you take a five minute break or a 10 minute break, and then you come back to it. And if you have time and you this is in your schedule, you do another Pomodoro, then another, then another. I recommend at least two per day. If you can only do one per day, that's totally fine. With learning Spanish, one Pomodoro per day is definitely better than nothing. So if you don't have much time, you're like, ah, I don't have time for two, I'm not gonna do anything. Nah, just do one at the bare minimum. And uh, actually I recommend doing one and just working yourself up to more. So Pomodoro timer set, let's start getting to work. So on any given day, you can kind of just go and choose any of these tabs right here that I'm gonna go through. But what I recommend is doing what really feels best to you, what you like doing, what you feel like your level of Spanish needs to grow, to improve, right? Because your ultimate goal is to get to fluency where you can understand everything, you can communicate most of what you wanna say, you may, you still make mistakes, but you're gonna get uh, feedback and then you'll, you'll correct those mistakes, right? So uh, first tab is Duolingo. Duolingo uses a translation type of method some people love it, some people hate it. I'm in between because I think that it's it's awesome if you are a beginner, beginner to intermediate, because you can come in there, come in here and build your build your base of knowledge. And here you have tons of options. You can learn uh, vocabulary about recreation, phrases, uh, grammar concepts, new vocabulary. Nothing wrong with it. it it's just not the end all tool that's going to get you to fluency. It's just a tool. It's just one of many tools that we use here. So use it. Don't obsess over it. Um, and don't think that you have to do it every day to achieve fluency. There's lots of other stuff and I'm going to show you this uh, right now. Uh, the next thing that we have here is Duolingo Stories. So Duolingo Stories is a fairly new feature. One I'm very fond of. You have many sets uh, up to 18 sets, so you have tons of content to work through. Um, and each story is read by a native speaker of Spanish. Um, they're actually pretty pretty entertaining, uh, sometimes kind of funny, silly but funny. And um, what I recommend is to be listening along to the story. Every time you have a sentence, read it out loud yourself. So, Hector está en casa con su esposa María. Buenos dias, Maria. Buenos dias, mi amor. All right. Now it quizzes you every now and then. What does mi amor mean? What do you think it means? My love. Cool. The story continues. So I think this is a great tool. And every time you finish a story here in Duolingo Stories, it's pretty nice because you actually then can go over to Tiny Cards, which is a Duolingo feature. And you can go to the story and study, learn, devour, digest the vocabulary of the story. 
So this is awesome. I love this feature too. Um, so personally, with me personally, uh, Duolingo itself is okay. I use it for some of the courses that I teach because I think it's great for building a foundation from, from, from beginner on up. But I really think that the Duolingo stories and also the Duolingo tiny cards feature is, there, is where they're at their best. Uh, that's just, that's just my, my personal preference. The next tab here is an article. So you don't have to read about NBA basketball, but the point of this is to read in Spanish about topics that interest you. I like NBA basketball. I'm a, a basketball sports news, or I'm a basketball news junkie. I love it. So I try to read it, in this case, in Spanish, or if you're learning Portuguese, in Portuguese. Um, and you're going to learn a lot of new words, a lot of new expressions. You're going to learn this word here, con coqueteando. All right, what is coqueteando? All right, so that takes us, well, let me stick to this topic. So when you're reading, the idea is you take turns reading out loud, reading to yourself, reading out loud, reading to yourself. I really think that this is a great way to do it because you don't get too tired and uh, you're not exhausting yourself and you're getting some really good reading practice in, which is essential. Reading is so undervalued, underrated for developing fluency in Spanish. It's a must. And when you're learning new words, I will show you here in just one minute what to do with these words that you're learning because uh, there is a little bit of a system that I recommend. The next tab, uh, Netflix. Now you can use Netflix, you can use YouTube. YouTube, to me, it's too easy to get distracted and go down <laughs> other rabbit holes uh, of English videos and stuff like that. YouTube, you can come in here, type in Mexican type in Colombian, type in Spanish, whatever. And it will give you a lot of series and a lot of movies in Spanish that also usually have Spanish subtitles that you can turn on. So you can watch in Spanish, listen to Spanish, and have the exact subtitles popping up right there as well. Um, personal recommendations, Club de Cuervos is awesome. It's really a very funny thing, um, a really funny series. Um, there's lots of stuff in here that you can go through. Um, Narcos was very cool. I like Narcos. Narcos Mexico. Um, lots of stuff. Roma won some, won some awards. Um, lots of funny stuff. Lots of good stuff uh, that I recommend. And always recommend Spanish subtitles, Spanish audio. It, it's just the way to go as you're learning. And then when you get more advanced, click off those subtitles and force yourself to just listen, listen, listen. So... When you're reading, when you're watching Netflix or YouTube videos, you should use, be using Google Translate and a Spanish dictionary. So Google Translate, uh, you can't always rely on it. It's a tool, just like all these other tools. Uh, wordreference.com is another tool, just like all these other tools. Highly recommended. Um, and also, too, something like uh, conjugation.org. It's excellent. I really recommend it. So when you have a verb, you need to learn how to conjugate it. And it takes time. It takes a lot of practice and time. But recommend this. Um, and also, when you're getting these new words, what do we do with these new words? So this takes us to Anki. So at Anki, basically in Anki, Anki is a digital uh, note-taking app and flashcard app all in one. So you basically just come here, you find what kind of computer you have. I have a Mac, downloaded the application. Boom, this is Anki right here. So with Anki, you create a deck. So you create a Spanish deck. And then when you have new words, you can add the words in here. I would recommend the front being in English, the back being in Spanish. When you get more advanced, you can have Spanish, Spanish. <laughs> but let's say English, Spanish for now, you add your words and you create a deck. So for Portuguese, I have, I have a deck. I have uh, this right here. <clears throat> and basically you come in and you study the words that you personally put in here. You learn new words, you learn new expressions, you put it in here, okay? And as you're going through here, so for example, excited in Portuguese, uh, animado, or, 
That's one way to say it. Empolgado is another way. So I could say, yeah, that was hard. So I could choose again, hard, good, easy. I'll say hard. Uh, for pity, um, por da, yeah. So that was that was good. I'll go with that. So over time, you're gonna see that you have every day you're gonna have new cards, learning cards, ones that you still have not committed to memory, and cards to review. And the computer actually does this all on its own. So it judges. Um, uh, every answer that you get right, every answer you get wrong, and every day you sit down, or every two days, every three days, you're gonna have a new, kind of like new assignments for your vocabulary. And that's what I recommend. I have right here, this tab, if you're, in case you're wondering, I, ha I have Googled a uh, podcast list, like top podcasts for Mexico. Uh, if you're trying to develop like a Mexican accent, it's important to listen to lots of Mexican Spanish. If you're trying to learn Spanish from Spain, it's important to listen to lots of audio, lots of speaking from Spain. Um, but only you know the answer to that. It's personal preference. But this is what I recommend, guys. I truly believe that the more you stick with this method, the more you sit down and you put in your work every single day, using something like this is going to really allow you to, to see steady progress. Un, uh, unstoppable, steady progress over time is the way to go. The only quick fix magic pill that you can take with Spanish fluency is to go live in another country and then to be studying and practicing every single day, nonstop. For the rest of us though, we need to optimize our computers. We need to optimize our smartphones, optimize our office, uh, our, 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 our own routine. And we, we too can also develop fluency in Spanish. It's totally doable. And this is one way to go about doing it. I hope you like the video, guys. I hope this helps you, gives you some ideas on how you can take your own uh, immersion, flu fluency progress. Um, um, you, can take, you can take control of that yourself. If you have any questions though, guys, leave them down in the comments below. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe. I'm gonna be putting out more videos like this and also a little bit different types of, type of videos as well um, as the channel continues to develop and grow. So I hope to see you in the next video. Hasta pronto, amigos. Espero verlos en el próximo video. Hasta pronto. Bye.